Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will answer a common question I get. And that is, let's say you work on a project that is purely written in Jetpack Compose, and you're obviously using view models, which we mostly do with Android projects, then what should you actually use in your view model for your UI states? Should you use Compose state directly, or should you use something else like live data or state flow? In this video, I will talk about the differences and advantages and disadvantages of each approach, and then give you a very, very clear recommendation. So the simple sample I want to build here is just a little app where we can uh, click on the background and we change its color to a randomized, randomly generated color. And I want to show you that with both approaches. So on the one hand, having a state flow and on the other hand, having compose state directly here in our view model. So first of all, we have a private val color forward, uh, yeah, color state flow. That's a mutable state flow where we simply have an initial color. Let's set it to white initially. I'll just save the integer here and we can then com convert it to compose color on our UI level uh, layer. And we also want to have a public immutable version of that, which is color as state flow. So that's just a normal approach we, we use when we use state flow so that the view model can change the mutable version of that. But the UI actually only gets the immutable version since the UI shouldn't actually change the value of that directly. The compose version of that would be having a variable. Let's call that compose color instead. And that would be by mutable state off. And in here, we also assign a default color, which I think should be like this. Yes, let's import that make it a private set. So we achieve the same thing uh, that we uh, that only the view model can actually change this compose color here. And then let's say we write a function generate new color. And in that function, we actually want to first of all generate a new color, which is random uh, dot next long, and we want to cap that at the maximum or the, at the highest color value we can actually achieve, which is white again. So we just uh, yeah, randomly generate a color here. And we then assign that on the one hand to our state flow using color dot value. And on the other hand, to our compose color. So just that we have two uh, these two different options here to compare. If we now go to our UI in main activity, that's just an empty compose project here. And on the one hand, we first of all get a reference to our view model, which is View model here and for that i do have a dependency that i included already so just for your reference let's open that um these two dependencies the runtime compose one is to safely collect flows in compose i will talk about that a bit more when we get to that and this one here is for the view model for getting a view model in a composable context like this here and yes we now actually get to getting the state from the view model so first of all we have our compose state oops Compose color is equal to view model dot compose color. That's pretty simple since we directly deal with a compose state here. Compose can also work with that, obviously. If we want to get the state flow as a compose state, however, we need to do that a little bit differently, and that is flow color, let's call it like that. And we say by view model dot color, which is our state flow, collect as state with a life cycle or collect as state. I am honestly not too sure what I want to use here. So the difference is that this approach um, properly considers all the lifecycle changes. So there are some lifecycle issues that can happen if you collect flows in the UI. Um, and it, that one uses this uh, something like re repeat on lifecycle. There is an API for that to safely collect flows. And this new collect as state with a lifecycle function considers that. However, it's still experimental if we add this, as you will see. And we need to opt into the <laughs> experimental lifecycle compose API, which I'm always not a big fan of doing. So you should also be fine with using collect as state. I'm actually not sure if there is actually a difference when we just talk about state flows. I'm not sure if you can really lose some kind of emissions. I don't think so. Um, so I personally use this one, to be honest, even though uh, if you listen to Google, the other one is the more correct one, but it doesn't feel correct if it's experimental. And if we then want to use these two values, we can actually just create a little box with a background. So let's say the modifier is modifier fill max size. We then say background, wrap that into a color. And here we simply assign our flow color, for example. And let's make that clickable. And here we simply say view model, generate new color. So the background color changes when we click on that box. And if we then launch this here on my device and take a look, 
we should be able to actually click this background and change the color, which works perfectly fine with our flow version. And of course, also with the compose color. So if we change this to compose color, it obviously will also work. If we relaunch this, take a look here, then we can also click this. So these two approaches now seem pretty much the same. However, there are some big differences and some advantages that one of these approaches actually clearly has over the other. And if you watched my past videos where I built some real projects in Compose, you mostly saw me use Compose states directly in a view model. And the main reason I did that was that it's just a little bit less code, as you can see, so we don't need to explicitly declare two um, properties or two fields here for one state. Here we can just say that's a private set and that'll work perfectly fine. And of course, in the UI, we also don't need this by collect as state. So that was just a little bit shorter. However, over time, I actually changed my opinion on that and I realized how much better it actually is if you use state flows directly. And I want to now show you three major reasons I see in that approach and why it's a clear recommendation from my side to actually use state flows in your view model and keep them pretty much compose state free. Reason number Number one, why I started doing that is that using flows allows you to use flow operators. And I've been starting to use these more and more and just realizing how awesome they are if you are able to use things like map, filter, combine, all these powerful flow operators you actually don't have with compose state. For example, if you have this color state and you want to have another color state um, that might be derived of that state, for example, you want to kind of do something with that color or transform it, then you could have something like red value, for example, so how red this color is actually that you changed. And you could simply say that's color dot map. And here, yeah, well, with this long is a, a little bit difficult, but you could then do something with that long and map it to a different value. And then you could say state in and you could have yeah another state flow that's derived of that color state flow. So whenever this color changes, then this red value will obviously also directly change. And I go more into detail in this in a video that I link down below in, in these flow operators I really like and what the state in actually means. But that's just one thing why I stopped using compose state directly in a view model because you can't do that with compose state. Compose state is simply just the, the type of variable that you declare here. And with a long, you of course don't have these operators since it's not wrapped in a flow or so. But let's get to reason number two why flows are better in a view model. And that is that they allow us to easier deal with process death. To show you a little example here, let's actually go back and I want to change this back to flow color. I want to show you something. If we relaunch this and take a look here and we click this a little bit until we get cool color, for example, this green one, and we then minimize our app, we go back to our studio, we open Lockcat, and here for this little arrow, um, we actually want to first of all select the device. We want to cancel or we want to terminate. And then we click on this little red square to actually terminate our application. And that is how we simulate process death. So process death in Android would be that the Android system decides because it needs memory and resources to kill your app if it's in the background because it's not needed anymore. If we do this and it's killed and we go back and the user takes a look at the recent apps tab. You can see the, the background is still green and they can still go back to the app because the back stack is actually restored. So the current screen where the user or where process death actually happened will be reopened after the user goes back. And if we do this, you will see the color is reset to white again. And that's the, pro the problem about process that your whole application state is actually lost. However, since the user still gets back to the location where they actually left, that can really lead to some invalid and bad states of your application if the user gets to a screen where they have the left, but all states actually get reset to the default. And what you would actually expect here, if they, or what the user would expect, if they go back, that the color is still green, basically the color uh, they, they actually left. And we can achieve this with saved state handle interview model by simply providing this here, private val safe state handle, and everything we save in safe state handle will also be restored on process death. That's also why the backstack is restored since that's saved in safe state handle. So what we can now do is whenever we actually update our state right here, we could say saved state handle that, or rather like a color. So we say the, we want to change the color field of our safe state handle and we set it to our new color. And the advantage is that safe state handle has a function that directly returns a state flow for us. So if we simply remove this uh, mutable version here and change this immutable version to safe state handle dot get state flow, 
the key is color and the default value is white again like this then as soon as we change a value and save state handle and assign a new value here this will trigger the state flow that it returns and we also don't need this mutable version anymore since we can now update our state like this and this will survive process death so if we remove this and we relaunch this take a look here we click this a few times for example here and we go back we go to logcat and we terminate our application again we go back and open this. I think I terminated it without minimizing before. Let's do this again. Um, let's leave it here again. We minimize this, uh, terminate it. And now if we go back, we should be able to still see this bluish color because we restore it from saved state handle. And you can see that's exactly what happened. So it's not white again. However, if we want to do this with compose, and compose state directly if we want to restore that from safe state handle that of course also works but it's a little bit more difficult so what we would need to do in that case is instead of uh, this state instead of declaring it like this for the default value we would need to say safe state handle dot get we want to get the color value we would need to say hey that's a long and if that doesn't exist so for the very first launch of our app there won't be this entry that's called color then we would still need to set it to a default color and if we then go back to main activity and we change this flow color to compose color relaunch our app then we should also still see that we can survive process death minimize this go back to under studio lock at terminate the app and here we want to go back oops and there we go we restored it however the disadvantage of this approach of using compose state now is that we actually have to update both these values because there is no way for us to actually get a compose state out of a state flow. So there is no get or collect as compose state function from safe state handle. No, we actually need to execute this. So we need to update the color in safe state handle and we need to update the state itself as well. So you would effectively need yeah two lines for every single state update or you make that a separate function but then you need a separate function for that which is of course not ideal so that's also a reason why i clearly recommend using state flow so we can get rid of this and this and all we really do is yeah have an immutable version of a state flow exposed to the ui that we get from safe state handle and we just need to update safe state handle here to be able to survive process death and a third reason of why this is the superior approach is that you just keep your view models compose free and that just makes them more reusable than if you would yeah kind of couple them to a compose ui because you could also use a view model in a non composed project this way if you use state flow and i'm actually not sure if you can share view models between iOS and Android if you use KMM, but if that is possible, I'm just not deep enough in, into KMM yet. If that's possible, then this would of course be much better if you have your view models compose free because the iOS side does not support compose yet, but yeah, state flows or flows in general are a Kotlin concept which would work with KMM. And if that was helpful for you, then consider subscribing to this channel to actually get two of such videos every single week to make you a better Android developer. Also, if you want to learn more about these flow operators I talked about, then consider clicking on this video to learn more about that and make your flows cleaner.